Good morning. So um, I'm one of the probably minority informaticists in the room, so we'll be taking a slightly technical bend. <clears throat> so uh, my role, UC Davis, is uh, academic research informatics. Um, but I am um, in, here in this room because I've been participating in a lot of patient-powered research networks and citizen science for quite some time because of uh, just kind of a moral need. Um, so what I'm going to talk about very quickly is Sharon Terry. Is she, is she here now? No, there she is. So I'm partially representing Sharon and uh, our Community Engaged Network for All, which is the Cori Project. Uh, so we've got this, uh, this has been the opportunity to assemble a number of the different aspects of what we believe are methods to engage citizens and communities in research um, actively. And since I'm an academic medical center, one of my biggest motivations is just to recruit patients and sustain that recruitment and engage them and continue to do that. The patient-powered research networks are a little bit outside the AMCs, but we have a process between the two. So I was going to speak to the three components of how uh, we are now modeling and doing this in, in real time and how they uh, uh, assemble into what I think are possible methods and approaches to uh, engage this. Uh, first is that with the philosophy is that uh, we are, what we're interested in is establishing trust and through this establishing trust and through informed communities and hopefully this is beginning to lead to a new kind of an agora, a social space where uh, participation can happen more actively than it has traditionally. Um, we need to develop this trust through community contact, um, directly off Elizabeth's points. Uh, we need to support a spectrum of how participants engage in these communities and develop trust. And we need to address the concerns through an active and dynamic process. And I think something that we're learning and will continue to learn is that we need to recognize and support the leaders that are also advocating these communities. Communities are led by people. They tend to have different aspects and engagements, but we recognize that these are influences and leaders. So what we've been doing within the SENA project, Community Engaged Network for All, um, uh, formerly Reg for All, we've decided to go big or go home, this is for everybody, um, is we have three major methods. The first is that when we originally wrote the grant, we, um, uh, Genetic Alliance has many, many disease efficacy organizations, DOs, and we held a competition in order to have them uh, propose to us how they would like to be engaged in more of a network-based community um, participant registry environment. And so we sent this out as a competition. We had, I think, 90 responses. And uh, these advocacy organizations themselves proposed exactly how they'd like to be engaged, who would lead this, what was the domain context, and about what ways they would learn and benefit um, from, from the work. We then engaged them in the grant, and now we have 10 of these DAOs, and we're going to 40 over the next year and a half, I'm told. Um, and we use, these leaders turned out to be the active participants. Now, they aren't informaticists, as we've learned. They are advocates. They are, sometimes they are scientists, or more often than not, they are not. So we're learning a lot about how we translate the needs of data definitions and data dictionaries to those who are uh, less um, uh, uh, um, experienced in that, but it is something that we uh, have now begin, uh, managed to assemble across these DAOs is representation of how you characterize rare advocacy diseases through clinical phenotypes. So that is, but this has really been led by our leaders and our participants. Um, that, that part of our process is to just really capture the leadership and really begin to, you know, build this community um, through that perspective. Second part of it is the platform itself that we're deploying. This is uh, an actual uh, web-based platform that uh, has a critical component, which is that it has is privacy, nuanced privacy aware. Anyone who this is aimed at the participants or the leaders or anybody. Anyone who participates in this platform um, uh, has the ability from the first second they um, approach it to identify how comfortable they are for sharing and, and developing privacy, um, uh, de explaining their perceptions on how they would like to be represented. Um, we do this a couple of ways. First, we provide um, a range of different advocates who are in the disease advocacy organization who they might be like. There might be someone who is uh, very much of a um, of a uh, active, enthusiastic sharer, uh, George Churches of the world, and then there's those who do not. And we allow them to identify with these, uh, which are actual patients or participants, and see if that's how they wish to participate. Then they have the ability to modify these privacy preferences at a very granular level. So they can say, well, I am an active, um, engaged participant, but I do not want to share with the government, but I would like to share with Duchenne Connect, but I would like to not determine uh, work with a certain investigator within a certain hospital or something like that. We have this very, very granular approach, though right now we're focusing on really the more general classification of are you engaged, are you not engaged. Um, 
And uh, so that is the platform. The platform is now deployed out to uh, almost all of our, I think, all our DAOs now. And then finally, what we're trying to build is aimed at the participants, the leaders, and the researchers themselves. So at UCSF, um, they've developed a platform called Open Proposals. And what Open Proposals is, is a collaborative development research environment from which uh, uh, proposals for active research are being developed. It's been in place for about three years now. Uh, what we'll be doing with uh, Sina and, uh, and uh, uh, the rest of our, our PPRN is uh, uh, providing this as a mechanism for both the researchers and the advocates and the leaders and anyone to participate in the development of these projects. The key aspect of this is that you can't actually just submit a proposal to open proposals. You have to participate in the development of all the other proposals to participate in your proposal. You have to comment and peer review everything that is being developed. And you have to engage at a very common transparent level. So advocates and patients, participants, are at the same level as the researchers and when they're participating and developing these proposals. Everything is very transparent. Anyone can look at it. It is, um, we, we're still exploring whether or not we're going to support anonymous comments and so forth. We think there's obviously a place for that. But it's, this is going to result, we uh, starting in about four months, in proposals that will be directly from patients and participants at UCSF and UC Davis engaged in developing uh, research proposals for their rare disease communities that we will be providing pilot funding that we will be then advocating and extending to hopefully other mechanisms. So that's our three main uh, methods and outreaches of this. I want to mention one final thing is that uh, there's been um, a series of projects that uh, has begun to develop really the place where communities are engaged. One of my colleagues um, at uh, UC Davis and uh, Cutler at all used the CTSA Sentinel Network and two large communities to actually look at underrepresented um, uh, uh, groups uh, in the Sacramento, Central Valley, and elsewhere, and uh, used five CTSA sites, two community organizations, to really um, determine uh, affinity and interest in research. And uh, so. They use the community groups for the outreach. They use the um, on-the-ground uh, meetings to actually do the interviews and everything else. They determined that out of almost 6,000 people surveyed, 91%, the highest reported outcome of this was African Americans. 91.91% stated they were interested in research. They're the highest group to be interested in contributing biospecimens, use of medical records, staying overnight in medical hospitals, use of medical equipment. And, and that outweighed all other ethnic, racial ethnic groups. But this was consistent across all geographic areas. So again, this is the where finding and using the community leadership and contacts gave the leverage for being able to develop these methods that are going to result, hopefully, in academic clinical uh, research environments.